Hi, welcome to Big Time Paranormal. My name is Larry Gonzalez. I am very happy that you're here for this segment. Now, this segment is going to be a little bit short because I'm actually getting ready in a little bit. We're leaving for Virginia City to do a little ghost hunting, just my wife and I. And being that I work a lot of hours, I'm very much looking forward to doing this. So let's get on with some of the news for the past week. Now, the first story that I have is actually a video that was caught. Uh, this guy was actually checking out tea in a store when this happened. Yeah, check this out. Right? This guy here, watch behind his head. What? Keep watching. Oh, just, just look at the shelf. It's the weirdest thing. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what is that? Okay, so you see the video. Now, again, we don't know if these kind of videos are real or not, but they're intriguing to see nonetheless. Now, our next video happens to have been very much viral. It was on Fox and Friends. Uh, just the other morning and they were kind of making light about it and so on like that that's their choice now I found a video that's actually quite short there's no sound there's no music there's nothing so take a look at this video and tell me what you think Okay, so that video was shot up in Canada. Now, a lot of activity when it comes to Sasquatch, of course, this is the Pacific Northwest, amongst other places in the United States, including Canada. Now, of course, Canada has a lot of forest. Now, again, is it really Sasquatch? I don't know. Could have been fake. Sure, we, we don't know. But it's still interesting nonetheless, and that is something for you to decide yourself, okay? The next video, now I have seen video like this before, and I have seen photographs, something very unusual. Now, what I'm talking about is that around the sun, they have been photographing and videoing some very odd objects that are around the sun and I know that Dr. Michio Kaku a physicist has said that an advanced civilization would know how to harness the energy of a sun now obviously space is very much still unknown are these crafts that are around the sun I don't know. Now, the video that I found is actually quite long, but I don't want to play the whole video. So I actually got my editor, my daughter, to actually tr trim it down a little bit so you can kind of get an idea of what it is that they're looking at. So let's look at that video right now.
Okay, so again, like I said, I've seen photographs like this before. Very interesting. I have seen that there's been photos going back to 2011, possibly even before that. 2011, last year, this year. Very strange objects around the sun. Now, what are they doing? Harvesting the energy of the sun? Possibly. Maybe they're using the sun to create a gateway between point A to point B. We know that civilizations that are more advanced would find a way to transverse space in the blink of an eye. Wormhole, you know, tearing the fabric of time and space to, to travel. Who knows? I, I don't know. Intriguing. Now, is it possible that it could be something of ours? Sure, there's that possibility as well. I don't know. I don't know. So, who knows? Maybe as time goes by, we'll find out. Now, the next story, it's uh, a woman in the UK. She actually photographed some UFOs from her Terrence while she was collecting laundry. Let's take a look at that video. What do you mean there's no video? Really? You couldn't find video on this? Oh, uh... Want me to reenact it? I guess I could... What you got there? Uh, okay, fine. Alright. My wife's a director. Okay. All right, so this is a what My cat just startled me. Anyway, so this woman, her name is Jean Daring. She lives on South Coats Lane and she was collecting, like I said, her laundry on her terrace when she saw a UFO. Now she grabs her camera and started taking photographs of it. And let's see. This is what she said. I can only say I saw I've always wanted to see a UFO. Now I have. She said adding it was very very weird. It was so bright it, it, it almost a fair shape object half the size of the moon. I dashed to get my camera and when I looked up again, the object was beginning to move in a clockwise circular motion, clearly visible T <clears throat> and dropped quite sharply downwards and then back upwards. She explained. She called for her husband. Her husband said, Blimey! What the hell is that? So then they told the neighbors. And of course the neighbors were like, Oh, that's, uh, that's something natural. It could have been Chinese lanterns. be maybe but I doubt it if you want to find any photographs of what she caught I'm sure you could find them on YouTube somewhere or an article or something uh, actually we did look for the video there is no video that I'm aware of no one interviewed her uh, but doesn't mean that you couldn't find them so anyway I thought I would make sure that you were uh, aware of what she saw and finally, our last story. Now, every kid, especially a girl, loves their dolls. And, you know, they grew up playing with their dolls, you know, having tea parties. And then as they get older, they tend to put the dolls up on shelves and stuff like that. I know a woman that she actually had 
a shelf running along her living room having all these different dolls. Of course, her husband was a little creeped out having all these dolls staring at him. Blimey! So, so anyway, now on Facebook, now I run a Facebook page called Big Time Paranormal. And with the recent movie, The Conjuring, we've had people that have been saying, well, what's the big deal about dolls? Are they real? You know, are they possessed or whatever? Well, I can tell you right now that what is considered the most haunted doll of them all. Now, this is not my opinion. This is the opinion of people that actually look into the phenomenon of haunted dolls. That Robert the Doll is probably known the most haunted doll of all. Now, he is in the museum down in Florida in the Keys. So if you ever want to go see him, he's there. Here's a video. It's a little bit on in the lengthy side. It's about five minutes or something like that long. So take a look at Robert the Haunted Doll. As a child who hasn't dreamed of a favorite doll or a teddy bear coming to life and being a very best friend forever and ever. Robert Eugene Otto had a doll who stayed with him his whole life. An artist and his muse in eccentric Key West, Florida. This doll was given to the six-year-old Robert Eugene by the family's Bahamian maid, who was said to practice voodoo. It was the perfect likeness of the young boy and was even named Robert after him. As a young boy, Eugene developed a strange fascination with Robert. He spent long hours alone with his doll, talking to it. And when anything went wrong at home, Eugene always knew who to blame. It was Robert, he would tell his parents. Robert did it. Robert did it. Eugene Otto became one of the most celebrated artists in this famous artist's colony. His fame grew beyond the Southerly Keys, as did his wealth. He preferred to paint in seclusion, alone, indoors, and with Robert always by his side. Eugene settled down with his wife, Anne, here at the artist's house close to Duval Street in Key West. Robert, of course, went with them. Anne disliked the doll from the moment she first saw it. It gave her chills just to look at it, and she didn't like her husband's obsession with it. Still, she humored him, and Robert was given a room of his very own, away in the attic. There he stayed until Eugene told his wife that Robert was angry and demanding a room with a view. Despite Anne's objections, he moved Robert out of the attic and down to the turret room. Robert was seated at the window looking out over the street. Children on their way to school said they saw Robert through the windows moving about the turret room, glowering at them. Inside the house, Eugene became increasingly irrational and violent, smashing things and lashing out at his wife and screaming like a madman. And then all of a sudden, he would be himself again. And he would always say exactly the same thing. It was Robert. Robert did it. Robert's influence seemed to grow stronger and stronger. A plumber working alone in the turret room with Robert fled the house in terror. He later said he'd heard Robert giggling. Other visitors swore that Robert's expression changed when they looked at him. Sometimes they said that he looked like pure evil. Eugene became sicker and sicker, becoming so despondent he locked himself away in the turret room until he finally died with Robert the doll by his side. Free at last, Anne fled the house, leaving Robert behind in the attic. The new owners discovered him soon after moving in. They took one look at Robert and knew that this, whatever it was, was something they definitely didn't want in their home. 
Robert ended up here, awaiting visitors in the East Martello Museum, where he holds an eerie fascination for everyone who sees him. Visitors to the museum, completely ignorant of this strange story, have been shocked as the expression on his face apparently changed before their very eyes. A psychic investigator said that Robert's soul is slowly dying, his hair turning white as he grows older. Today, the artist's house where Robert once lived is a guest house. Stay a night, if you will. Go ahead. He's still here, in the darkest recesses of the attic, say the staff, who avoid coming up here. And after her death, Eugene's wife, Anne, appeared here too. Her ghost stalks the turret room. Anne is trapped here now with Robert, the doll. And as for Robert, the artist, he tragically discovered that the things we love to possess sometimes end up possessing us. I love Robert, the haunted doll. He is so cute. I want to go visit him. Anyway, they say that if you do go see Robert the Haunted Doll down in Florida, make sure you ask for permission to take photographs. You have to ask him. They say that when you ask him, he will give you a certain expression, letting you know it's okay. You'll know, they say. Now, there's a board that's there full of letters of people who have not t taken the time out to ask permission. They just took pictures and so on. And a lot of bad luck has happened to them. And they sent letters saying, Please, Robert, I apologize for not taking it seriously and ask for your permission. Please lift the, the bad luck off me. And supposedly the bad luck does disappear. If you happen to be down there, make sure you take the time to ask him before you take a single photograph. Please, Robert, may I have permission to take your picture? Otherwise, <laughs> oh, you're going to have fun. But that's not me saying that. It's people that actually have studied the phenomena. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful week. Like I said, this week my wife and I are going up to Virginia City to do a little ghost hunting, just her and I, uh, for my birthday. We're actually looking forward to doing some of this. Because of the hours at work, I don't get a chance to do this very often anymore. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Plus, it's the beginning of Hot August Nights, and I'm looking forward to taking pictures of really cool cars up in the uh, up in Reno on the on the Strip. So it's going to be a blast. I'm going to have a lot of fun, and I hope you guys the best when it comes to your investigations on the paranormal. Each and every week, look for me here on Worldwide Paranormal Network. And remember, come over to Big Time Paranormal on Facebook and give us a like. Say hi, let us know what you guys are doing and what your team is name and any promotion uh, promotions that you guys are, are putting on, whether it's a convention or a meet and greet or whatever. Please let us know. We'll be more than happy to get it out there for you. So until next week, remember... Today is your day. Go out and make it happen. And we'll see you. <laughs>